A mere fortnight ago, we informed you about the positive development that the Boeing Starliner is all set to take off with astronauts on board for the first time next month. Alas, despite the hopeful news, the spacecraft appears to be plagued by a persistent curse and has yet again been delayed. Yep, again. Can you believe it? In any case, let's take a look at what is ailing the progress of the Boeing Starliner in today's episode of Alpha Tech. I can imagine that it's quite painful to remember that NASA dumped $4.2 billion of taxpayer money on Boeing to build the spacecraft. In addition, the agency even paid a $185 million charge to pay for the second setback on the Starliner crew capsule, bringing the company's out-of-pocket costs on the troubled program to $595 million since 2019. Everything seemed to be getting better when Boeing recently kept saying they were making good progress to launch in April. Keyword, seemed. However, at the last minute, NASA just delayed Boeing Starliner's debut crewed voyage. The Starliner mission is now slated to launch after a private astronaut mission scheduled for May as teams assess readiness and complete verification work for the spacecraft. NASA's Space Operations Chief, Kathy Luters, said on Twitter, As always, we will fly when we are ready, Luters tweeted. Steve Stitch, head of NASA's commercial crew program, said in an interview with Reuters before the delay was announced that the certification process for the spacecraft had taken a little longer than we expected and was a whole lot of work. The delay comes as Boeing and NASA performed extra testing on several areas of the spacecraft. Boeing software engineers are running tests with Starliner's manual flight system used as a backup in case the spacecraft's automated flight software fails, Stitch said. A Boeing spokesman said the focus for the testing is for added redundancy in cases of emergency. Deliberations about mission-critical lithium-ion batteries and the low chance they overheat while the spacecraft is docked to the station also took more time than expected, Stitch added. In a recent pre-flight technical meeting, with Boeing and NASA officials, the space station's chief safety officer and representatives from NASA's astronaut office disagreed with Boeing's plans to proceed with the mission, citing concerns over the batteries, according to a person who attended the meetings. But those NASA officials eventually agreed with Boeing and others at the Federal Space Agency that the chances of a battery mishap that would endanger the crew were low, said the person who requested anonymity to discuss pre-flight deliberations. Boeing is also also weighing battery redesigns and a plan to add shielding in case one overheats, Stitch announced. SpaceX, which has already flown seven crewed missions for NASA since 2020, redesigned its spacecraft's batteries at one point. Of course, they have the luxury of having a lot of battery expertise at Tesla, Stitch commented, referring to the electric car maker that Musk leads. Boeing, in a statement, said on Wednesday it has had no issues with Starliner's batteries during tests. The company said, Boeing has conducted more than a dozen Starliner battery thermal runaway tests, stressing the battery cells beyond their intended limit. No issue has surfaced. Stitch acknowledged there had been a little disagreement during the meetings over how a potential failure of one of the battery cells could spread to other cells. He said there have been no test failures, but added that sometimes a cell got a little out of balance during past tests. The Starliner battery concerns and expected upgrades, which had not been previously reported, would add to a growing to-do list of tests and redesigns Boeing has faced before it embarks on the long-awaited operational phase of its NASA contract, which involves six astronaut missions over the next few years. But does anyone get the vibe that NASA is being a little impatient about this? I mean, honestly, NASA has overseen Starliner's development under a $4.5 billion contract contract awarded back in 2014, so I guess they can be a little bit impatient, but still, uh... Some 80 software failures cut short an initial uncrewed Starliner test flight in 2019. The capsule made a successful repeat of that mission in 2022. Boeing also plans to redesign a system that separates Starliner's main crew module from its service module, a trunk section containing thrusters that is ditched before the spacecraft returns to Earth. 
Stitch explained. Federal procurement data shows NASA has agreed to pay Boeing at least $24.8 million for the upgrade of that system. Boeing last year also opted to redesign valves on Starliner's propulsion system to prevent them from sticking shut prior to launch, which caused a lengthy delay in 2021. NASA and Boeing's aim to have the valves redesigned for future missions initiated a dispute with Boeing's propulsion system supplier. Aerojet Rocketdyne blamed Boeing for the problems, refusing to pay for the redesign. Reuters reported last year. Boeing has now cut Aerojet from the redesign process and is working directly with Aerojet's valve supplier, New Jersey-based company Murata, said a person involved in the process who asked not to be identified. Aerojet and Murata declined to comment, but Boeing said, we are working with Murata on a valve redesign. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Now, while the Starliner was still struggling on the ground, SpaceX's Dragon successfully completed six NASA crew missions to the ISS. SpaceX plans to add to that tally with Crew-7 in August or thereabouts, but that coming mission will follow on the heels of two crewed flights, if all goes according to plan. First up is AX-2, which is currently targeting a liftoff in May from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Is it AX-2 or is it AX-2? Let me know your thoughts. It will be operated by Houston-based company Axiom Space, whose AX-1 mission with SpaceX back in April of 2022 was the first ever all-private crewed flight to the orbiting lab. AX-2 will send four people to the ISS aboard a Dragon capsule. Investor and paying customer John Schaffner, Rayana Barnawi, and Ali Akarni, both of whom are members of the Saudi Arabia's first astronaut class and Peggy Whitson, a record-setting former NASA astronaut. Whitson, who's a consultant for Axiom Space, will command the 12-day mission. Barnawi and Alkarni will be the first Saudis to travel to the ISS, and Barnawi will be the first woman from the kingdom ever to reach the final frontier. The second of these back-to-back -back private crewed missions is Polaris Dawn, which is tentatively slated to launch from KSC in July. Polaris Dawn is bankrolled and led by billionaire tech entrepreneur Jared Isaacman, who also commanded Inspiration4, the first ever all-private crewed mission to Earth orbit in September of 2021. Ah yes, I remember those days. Polaris Dawn will use the same Dragon capsule that flew on Inspiration4, a spacecraft called Resilience. The coming mission will also be a free flyer. It will not meet up with the ISS. But Polaris Dawn will go higher in Earth orbit than Inspiration4, aiming to get a maximum of 870 miles or 1,400 kilometers above our planet. That would break the record for the highest ever crewed orbital mission, which the current mark is 850 miles or 1,368 kilometers, set by NASA's Gemini 11 back in 1966. Polaris Dawn, the first flight in the ambitious private Polaris program, will push the envelope in other ways as well. For example, the mission aims to conduct at least one spacewalk, which will be a first for a private astronaut flight. Joining Isaacman on Polaris Dawn will be mission pilot Scott Kid Poteet and engineers Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon. SpaceX is prepping for more than just two private astronaut flights, of course, as the company will continue to build out its giant and ever-growing Starlink constellation over the coming weeks and months, for example, and it's getting ready to debut its huge Starship Mars-bound rocket. SpaceX aims to launch the first ever orbital test flight of Starship as soon as next month from Starbase, the company's facility in South Texas. The prototype vehicle that will conduct that flight cleared its last big pre-launch hurdle back in February 9th, successfully test-firing 31 of the 33 Raptor engines on its huge first-stage booster at only 50% power. Whoa, what a huge difference. Unfortunately, that's just about it for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos like this. And so for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.